It's so important to remind ourselves of who Jesus is and all he's already done for us. I personally always had or gained young an understanding of the story of Jesus. But one thing I never understood was why all of this truly mattered, like in my everyday life. This may shock some of you, but I wasn't raised Christian. I'm not standing before you here today because I've always known him, grew up in the church, all that good stuff, but I had to come to know him. I grew up in a home where my parents and I both practiced actually really worldly lifestyles. And I could get into the details, but the reality is me trying to find any truth other than that of God, the God of the Bible, trying to build my life on any other promise than the word of God, that was my real issue. That was actually the root of all of my real issues. The resulting trauma and suffering that I so easily brought on myself are not the main thing that Jesus changed in my life. That should not be the focus of my testimony. I'm here to testify about the goodness of God available to you. So that's where all of this who, what, and when meets the why, and the answer is his love the how he was wholly risen and his willingness to live and die for you actually matters in your real life. His love, despite my hatred towards him, his pursuit, despite my rejection of him, it just, it changed the whole story. It flipped the whole script. In John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the father, but by me. You see, his heart for you and me it's just never changed it was my heart towards him that changed my sins were a result of my heart turned away from god and his ways he let me live by my own wisdom and have the consequence of that and that was the real sin that i had made my own ways above god's ways and honestly just so you know i'm not special this applies to you too god knows us so well that he speaks about us like this in isaiah Chapter 53, verse 6, he said, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him, that's Jesus, <laughs> the iniquity of us all. When I was still sinful, when I was opposed to God and therefore his enemy, he sent Jesus to die for me, to take on the full punishment for my choices, past, present, and future. For the specific sin of rejecting him and any that would come from it. But here's the thing about the goodness of God. Even if I would have never chosen to acknowledge my sin, never chosen to turn away from it, and never chosen to follow after God instead, being pursued by this relentless love of God softened my heart to be able to hear verses like Acts 3.19, which says, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. So the refreshing of the Lord happens in the heart and mind through exposure to his word, that's the Bible and the work of the Holy Spirit in us. The way that you and I think can truly be refined, transformed. The Bible even calls it translated. We get translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of his dear son. His word is truth and in it, it says in John 16, 13, But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. His word, the Bible, and the Bible alone is a lamp to our feet, literally showing us the way that he intended us to live. All of this is how we get to live redeemed. It's not just for some. It's not just for the good ones, for those who never mess up, who those seemed to not have any struggles anyways. It's not just for those who seem to be able to just put down the patterns of this world and walk away from them and have... No trouble at all. No, actually, it is even more so for those of us who recognize the reality of our sin. It is even more so for those of us who recognize our need for God. If you hear nothing else today, hear the Lord pointing out where you are not making him first in your life. Don't suppress that thought. That is God and his love calling you to him, to know him and to let him be known by you so that you can turn from trusting in yourself and instead trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Let Jesus show you how to put those sins down and he will. He will redeem your life. Jesus will lead your life both now and in eternity to come. The spirit and the bride say come. Come and be redeemed. And if you want to talk with someone about following Jesus, 
please reach out. I love you. God loves you so much more.